What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode. Yours truly, Lou Ross. Um, thank y'all for tuning in. I want y'all to hit that like, uh, hit that like, smash that like button right now. Just like, 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 like. Just keep doing it. Then after you do that, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. So uh, yeah, I mentioned a while back. This is a political show. I believe like an episode or two ago, I mentioned something about the stuff that's going on in VA. And uh, if you guys have any comments, I want to read them. Just keep them coming. Let me know. I got a little segment. Let me know. Uh, this episode is similar to the last episode. So I got a special guest. His name is Steven Krasner. You know, like I said, it is back to school. I got a couple back to school episodes. We're getting back into the flow. I know a lot of y'all parents happy. Y'all kids going to school, back to school. Yes, I get to kick these up because I don't get a little tired of myself. Or what the case may be. Anyways, I'm glad y'all tuned in. So, won't waste no time. Let's get into it. Roll the first clip. You saw that fit? Roll it. And she's pretending her leg is broken and she can't move. Could she have taken the ring? Um, my writing career um, started uh, for the newspaper uh, at the Providence Journal in 19, uh, 1975. Um, as far as writing children's books, it's something I always wanted to do. So when our kids got a little older, uh, I decided to, uh, to create a book. You know, my first book that I had published was, why not call it Cow Juice? Plays on words, the dad's a little strange, which fits me perfectly. Um, and um, my, my family was in the book, so that was, that was important to me. But um, obviously, I, I didn't want to be a sports writer when I grew up. I wanted to be a professional baseball player. I played in high school, I played in college. I was pretty good, but not good enough. But because, as I like to tell the kids in the classroom, because I could write, I spent 33 years getting paid to watch games for the Province Journal. 22 of those years I covered the Red Sox. And along the way, in college, I was a sports editor in my high school newspaper. I was a sports editor in my college newspaper. So, and summer times I would work at a newspaper. So I was getting experience that way. Uh, so that for me, I would have preferred to be a baseball player. But as second choices go, it was a pretty good one. What I do in the classroom, which is to write stories, different things at different age levels, but most of all to engage students in the writing process, to show them and reinforce that it is a process, and also some, you can have fun with words. You can you can um, you can use your imagination and just go with it and enjoy writing because writing can be fun. Not to mention the fact you can make a living at it, maybe like me, getting paid to watch baseball games. It's writing is what you see and how you see things. So you have to open up your senses to to see what's going on around you and to think of it as a story. I mean, everyone has life experiences. And what I like to say is, everything that happens to you is a story. It may not be so nice to go through at the time, like when you get that flat tire and it's pouring rain outside, but it becomes a story at some point, you know? And, and so we want to be open to writing those stories, putting those down on paper or the computer or whatever, because it's your family history, it's your history, and it's, it's meaningful. And, and to be able to express yourself, you're getting more experience and uh, practice and expressing yourself, especially for the scholar athletes, will be beneficial because eventually they're going for jobs, you know, and, and they're going to hopefully college or, or community college or somewhere, and the writing that they do 
to communicate with people. It's not all about the, you know, the cell phones and the video games and the, you know, at times you have to write, physically write. Uh, so to be oh, able to know what that process is, Are is important. Are you suggesting, sir, that I made a mistake? Yes. <laughs> Who's the professional author here? Me, did you see my books? And yeah, you're like suggesting I might have made a mistake? Yes. Yeah. Writer's block is something I should have said to the kids today, but I didn't. But one of the things is you learn that you don't necessarily have to write from first word to last word. So I'd be covering games. Some games, they'd be just routine games, nothing special about them. But obviously, I have to write a 25-inch story. But I didn't know how to lead the story. So, but I knew there was a certain part of game action that had to be in the middle. And I got a great quote for the end. So if I type those in now, kind of freeze, freeze the mind, say, oh, well, now I know how I want to start the story, as opposed to just sitting and thinking, oh, how am I going to start, how am I going to start, how am I going to start, well, now you're, you're paralyzing yourself. So the toughest thing about writing is, I think, it's as much observing and finding what you want to write about as it is the writing, because if you write about what you feel and what you see, the words almost jump out of you. They, you can't hold them back. And don't worry about the commas and capital letters. They're not the least bit important in the writing process. When you're done, yes, put the capital letters where they belong and the commas and the periods. That's the mechanical part. We can fix that. We can check that. We can get that done. But don't let that get in the way of getting your ideas out there or, or trying to use different words, better words, like instead of big, humongous, gigantic. So, so just write. You know, I mean, there's no... Writing and reading go hand in hand. The more you read, the better you're going to write because everything just kind of seeps in. You know, the sentence structure and the vocabulary and all of that. So, um, you know, it's like anything else. The more you do it, the easier it becomes. And for me, it's always been children's books. Um, do I think I could write a novel? You know what? I probably could. But I don't want to. I'd rather write children's books, you know, picture books. And it comes from my imagination. As my family knows, I'm always thinking, and I'm always coming up with plays on words and just, you know, silly little, you know, but I'm thinking, I'm always thinking. And so you're, that's where your ideas come from. And so you have to listen to yourself sometimes, see things and listen to yourself, and have fun with it. One, two, three, four. You know why it only has four fingers? Because people back then only had four fingers. <laughs> <laughs> My message to the scholar athletes would be, right. You know, I mean, not every assignment they get in school are they going to be thrilled to do. Too bad. Tough. That's their job. That's what life is. No one has a job that's perfect. Even covering baseball games wasn't perfect. It was good, but it wasn't perfect. But they should also know that there are opportunities to write whatever they feel like. You know, when they're home, just instead of playing a video game, you know, write a short story. Create a character. Just, you know, let it fly. Have some fun. Um, because all of that will help them approach the other assignments that they will be getting in, in school, that they have to write and do the best they can. So it's kind of an, or it's a process thing, organization and, and process. All right, there you have it. Our, my very first episode of Groovy People. I want to thank Stephen Krosner for his time. Thanks for coming out to speak with the kids. And they love making a story with you. That was a uh, great experience. It was some funny times, some uh, some great laughs. And uh, like, I, like he said, you know, practice makes perfect. Uh, my scholar athletes and those who are aspiring to do something in their life. So reading and writing go hand in hand. So... Again, to my scholar athletes, I will be seeing you. Uh, shoot me a message if y'all know some scholar athletes. His links and his info, Stephen Krasner, should be here or in the links afterwards. Uh, thank y'all for tuning in. Thank y'all for y'all support, watching it and liking it. For those who doing it, for those who not, make sure y'all do that. Subscribe and share the video. Uh, yeah, that was the episode. Till next time, man. And I want to hear what y'all got to say. I really want to hear that. Just uh, make a comment or something, even if you, even if it's negative. I want to hear. It. Let me know. Peace.